Hello everyone, this is Amish from digitalbrainbase.com. In today's video, we are going to be exploring the Open Web UI platform. Now, before we do that, the first thing that I want to do is to just make sure that Open Web UI is currently up and running. The way that I can check that is by opening up Docker Desktop. And here I can see that my container for Open Web UI is currently running and it's on port 3000. I also want to make sure that Olama is also going to be running. So if I hover here, I can see that Olama is currently working. It's currently running. It doesn't open up a new software browser or anything like that. It's just working in the background. So now that I know these two things, let me select a local model. So I'm going to take Llama 3.2. And if you don't have this model, you can simply download the latest version of Llama 3.2, or you can have any other model also running. Now, First thing that we'll want to do is to look over the controls. And here we can see that there are a couple of things that we can adjust. I'm going to start with the system prompt. So this really tells us how we want the model to actually respond to us. As an example, if I ask the model to respond to me like you're a parrot, and I ask it to tell me a fun fact about the Roman Empire, this is the type of response that I would get. I could even say instead of parrot, let's try pirate. And then I'm going to ask it the same exact prompt again. And this is the response that I would get. So system prompt really helps us to see what kind of response we would want to get out of this model. Now, there are a couple of parameters here that we can change. I'm not going to go too in-depth into these, uh, but I will link a video that you can take a look at that's going to go over a lot of these parameters in a lot more detail. Now, the goal of this video is to go over some of the other functionalities that Open Web UI has to offer. Now, the purpose of this video was just to give you a high level overview of some of these parameters and settings. So under models, we can really create our own customized models. So I can select my own base model to work off of something like Claude Sonnet 3.5. I can edit my system prompt as well as advanced parameters, decide if I wanna give it some additional tools or filters, as well as any other capabilities like vision or usage or citations. Once I hit save and create, it will create my own custom model that's based off of some base model like the Cloud 3.5. Knowledge allows me to create a collection of different text-based data that I can then reference within the Open Web UI platform. So here, for example, I can reference something like my candidate resume pool or my employee handbook. Let's try candidate resume pool. I can ask it a question, something like, I want to hire someone with SQL experience. And what it's going to do is going to take a look at all of the different resumes in my resume pool. And it's going to list Brad Olivier as the person that has the best SQL experience. That is what the knowledge base is about. I can create a collection of different things here. So here I have a collection of different resumes. Here I have a knowledge base of an employee handbook. If you wanted to, you could also create your own knowledge base. Maybe it could be a collection of different items and that can be your own sort of digital brain. Prompts allow us to reuse a lot of these settings. If, for example, imagine that you had a very specific prompt that took you a, lot of, a, a long time to actually tailor for your purpose or application. Well, instead of you creating like a separate Word document and then saving all of your prompts there, within Open Web UI, you can simply save all of them here. So if I was to take a look at this one, I can see that this is my exact prompt. And if I wanted to access this prompt, all I would do is add a forward slash and then reference either the, Docker, the cover letter prompt or the Docker Compose one. Let's try the cover letter. It says, please craft a tailored cover letter for, let's say, data scientist. And then I can fill in the rest of the details here. So that's what the whole prompt section is about. And then lastly, we also have tools. Now within Open Web UI, we can either create our own tool or we can just import one from the Open Web UI community. So if you click on this link, it's going to take you to the Open Web UI homepage. And here we can see that there are a bunch of different community tools here. So if I click on see all, it does take a second to load. There, there it is. There are a bunch of different tools that are available, like one for weather, there's one for running some code, there's one for email. Let's try the one for Reddit, why not? So if you see this tool and you want to import it, all you would do is select get, 
import to open web UI. Automatically here, it gets within the open web UI platform. You would just hit save and then confirm the settings. Once that's done, all you would do is go back here and then enable the tool. So we know that the tool is running because it's kind of showing up like this. And I can ask it a question, for example, top post from our data science. And here it's retrieving 26 posts from the data science subreddit. And these are all of the posts that it pulled up. So I can ask it, for example, to elaborate on specific things. Let's just say I wanted to elaborate on this. So elaborate on this post. And then it does talk about that. And then it goes over a little bit more detail about what that post was essentially about. It even tries to answer that post here. So this is one example of a tool. Every time you have a tool running, it will show up here. And if you want to stop the tool, all you would do is stop it like that. Something else that we can do is imagine that we wanted to ask it to give us some ideas for some creative art. Here it gave us some ideas. Imagine that we only wanted to edit a small section of it. So let's say this one. All you would do is if you highlight it, you can ask maybe a question like elaborate, please. And it would only look at that one section that we highlighted. We could also highlight the section and then ask it to explain that in a little bit more detail. So those are things that we, we have access to. Suppose that we want to compare the performance of two models, both simultaneously. Well, here I have chat GPT 4.0. Let's just say I also pull a Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I can ask a question, something like write some code to invert a linked list in Python. Now it's a little bit slower on the chat GPT 4.0 side, but here we can see that at the end of the day, I get the same sort of response coming in from both of these different um, codes. The one from Claude 3.5 Sonnet is a little bit more detailed. It also has uh, more testing for the code as well. So this is how you can even compare the performance of two or three different models. That's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Um, if you have any ideas on future topics that you'd like for me to cover, please leave a message in the comment section below and I'll make sure that it gets addressed. Thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.